Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about comb filtering. It comes up a lot. I see a lot of it in, in the drawings and uh, photos that you, all, you send in, so I think it's something we, we need to address. Let's define it first. What is comb filtering? Comb filtering is a series of unwanted reflections between a speaker or a sound producing device and a boundary surface or any surface. It's a series of back and forth reflections that are trapped, mainly for middle and high frequencies. Let's use an example to illustrate this point. See a lot of hi-fi systems with left and right two channel systems. And then in the middle, they'll have an equipment rack and the equipment rack will be just as high as their speakers. So all of this area between the equipment rack and the speakers is producing a series of back and forth reflections that are audible. So do you really want more noise in your, at your listening position because of all this interference going on between your speakers and your equipment rack? The same thing is true for the sidewalls. Okay, you have to be very careful with those distances. This is sacred ground. You can't have anything between your speakers. If you do, it has to be low and placed back. Keep it low. Okay, you don't want any reflections striking the equipment, bouncing against the speakers, and then producing distortion that, that's then added to your room sound. So. We have so many variables that we have to control that this is one that we, we see all the time. And the reason it's called a comb filter is because on a graph, on an analysis, you will see that it looks like the teeth of a comb. And that's that zigzag pattern that you see all the time. And that's a series of reflections moving back and forth. And it will produce noise and it will produce a phantom image. And that's the last thing we want. We sure don't want anything competing with the energy from our speakers. We're doing our best to minimize room sound and hear more of the sound from our speakers. So the last thing that we want to do is add comb filtering to the process. Let's look at uh, some examples uh, in real life that, that we see all the time that, that you have to deal with. And one of those examples that we have to deal with is in a professional recording studio, and that's the console. I mean, it's a fact of life we have to have a console. It's a fact of life we have to have a monitor, and it's a fact of life that we have to sit at that listening position and hear it. So what happens is the energy from the speaker strikes the console and then it com comes back into our ears. This is also a time delay issue because so, it has a, a time signature to it, but it also, remember, sound takes on the characteristics of the surfaces that it strikes. So you're going to get, forgive me for saying this, console sound back at the listening or monitoring position. So we need to elevate the monitor, change the angle of attack, so we reduce this kind of situation. Where else do we see it? We see it in home theater applications with that dreaded center channel. Okay, we all see that center channel in home theaters, right? Where is it usually located? It's usually on the floor. Well, what's the first thing that the energy from the center channel strikes? The floor. And then it arrives at the listening position. So we have the direct energy from the speaker, then we have all these reflections or comb filtering off the floor, these interference patterns, competing with the direct energy, okay? We're not a big proponent of center channels. We split the signal from center channels and we, we use a whole nother set of speakers for it. So you'll have center left, center right, you'll have right, and you'll have left. Because this array puts all the energy in a straight horizontal plane. You don't have any horizontal dispersion and vertical dispersion. So you get all your energy with this. So we're not a big proponent of center channel speakers simply because of the comb filtering effect that we see. Consoles uh, for monitoring in the pro world. So stay away from comb filtering. Be very conscious of it. Your speaker is an energy producing device. It's already restricted in its usage because it has to be in a room. So that produces a whole set of uh, issues. 
but let's let's be conscious of the proximity of our speaker with floors consoles and uh, all boundary surfaces because those series of reflections produce distortion and distortion is something we do not want so thank you today's video if you did give me a thumbs up so i know that it had value to you and please if you have any questions leave them in the comment section and i'll be more than happy to answer them for you Alternatively, if there are other topics that you wish to discuss, discuss or see discussed in a video presentation, send me a, an email, info at acousticfields.com, and uh, we'll get them on our list and, and get them done for you. I release a new uh, video about every week, so stay tuned to our YouTube channel and keep uh, updated on our new videos.